everybody. How is everyone doing? How are you all keeping? Welcome to Isabella Banks YouTube channel where we discuss all things Harry, Megan and their level up journey. If you're new here, I'm Wheezy and it is absolutely great, fantastic to meet you virtually. So, how's your weekend going? I'm just going to pause to say hello to everyone in the comment section. Hello, Gwen. How are you doing? Hi, Kathy. Hi, Joanne. How are you all? Can you hear me? If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up in the comment section. Let me make sure that I am not speaking into the void. <laughs> Hi, Cookies and Cream. Hi, Sharon. Hi, hi. Oh, th thank you, Gwen, for the thumbs up. Thank you, thank you. As per usual, we are discussing the latest events in the wacky world of the toxic British media, the British royal family, and how they are trying very hard to drag Harry and Meghan into their malfunctioning mess. So guys, did you guys notice that in my last video, right, where after we discussed the Sussex news, I attempted to organize a YouTube mastermind for YouTube content creators, but it didn't go so well. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pump the brakes on that for the moment. Perhaps we'll revisit it um, further down the road. Maybe by the time I get to 5,000, 5K or 10K subscribers, just because although one or two people did have questions to ask, um, but it's not sufficient to base a whole live stream around. So I'm going to pump my brakes on that one. But before I begin today's episode, let me say a huge thank you to everyone for supporting me in my journey towards 3000 subscribers. I'm so over the moon, very excited to have achieved that. Right. So I thought to myself, rather than scrapping that opportunity to give back uh, in the form of doing YouTube content creator masterminds, perhaps what I should do instead is to offer um, Spotlight Thursdays. That is a situation where people who've got YouTube channels, you just let me know that you want your YouTube channels, you want me to spotlight your YouTube channels. So we will offer you the opportunity to give us a pitch on your YouTube channel. Uh, and then after that, we will encourage everyone who is listening to go over to your channel to subscribe, just promote you. This is one way of giving back to each other. If you notice, the Sussexes, uh, yeah, they've got a different level of resources from us, but they don't spend, I don't, can't imagine how much of their day they spend thinking about the British media. So while all of this is going on, one thing they do is to continuously work towards building themselves up. And I think if there's any lesson to be learned from Harry and Meghan, it is to just keep on hustling, keep on putting one foot in front of the other, because it seems like the best antidote to people attacking you is your own success. It's your own success. So just like they say, eh, you just need to build the walls around you. And if I can offer my platform as a way for people to achieve that, why not? Why are we here otherwise? 
<laughs> let's i think it's, it's one of the things that differentiates us from the derangers and uh, where the derangers they their main purpose is just to hate on megan whereas the sussex squad they have so many different purposes yes it's in the defense of harry and megan another way is thing we do is that we also raise funds for charity we support the organizations that harry and megan support and i don't think that we should be i think if we are behaving like uh, uh that this phrase might come off awkwardly but i'm hoping that you can get the sense of what i mean we are behaving like women in a household, like where we've got the husband and the kids. So we're so busy taking care of Harry and Meghan. Let's not forget about ourselves in the process, because when we take care of ourselves, it makes us strong enough to take care of Harry and Meghan. When the need, intense need to stand up and battle on their, on their behalf arises. Anyway, uh, in today's video, we're focusing our attention uh, on the British royal family's attempt to force either Harry and Meghan to break up, which will cause Harry to return to the UK, or force them back, both of them back to the UK. And I just reached that conclusion when I look back at the various steps that they have taken, which I'm going to share with you in my next slide right so it's uk's attempts to force prince harry back to the uk so as you can see on the thumbnail you've got this uh nick variety says netflix ted surrounders will be make will be will be made an honorary commander of the order of the british empire by king charles additionally Chris Nolan and his wife, producer Emma Thomas, will be given knighthood and damehood for their services to film. Right. So uh, the article actually says, in addition, Ted Sarandos, the co-chief executive officer of Netflix, will be recognized as a commander of the Order of the British Empire, CBE, for his contribution to the creative industries. This honor is considered one of the highest accolades in the UK. They gave a little bit of background on Sarandos saying he has been with Netflix six, since 2000 and has played a pivotal role in content operations, green lighting, successful shows like the Emmy award winning series, The Crown. The Crown, did you guys get that? What was your impression of the last series of The Crown? Okay, Be, hold that thought as you think about it, hold that thought as I continue. Says his appointment as co-chief executive officer in 2020 further solidified his influence within the company. Well, I'm sure a lot of you, uh, I was a bit worried about when I saw this. I'm still a bit uh, I think the percentage of my worry went down when I remembered that he is married to Nicole Avant. Nicole Avant is the daughter of Clarence Avant, who is known as the Black Godfather in Hollywood. She is no small potatoes either. She's not a lightweight. Um, she is not a lightweight whatsoever. Nicole Avant was appointed United States Ambassador to the Bahamas by President Barack Obama on June 16, 2009, and served until November 21st, 2011. Avant is highly awarded for her grassroots community building work and philanthropy. Avant produced the 2019 documentary, The Black Godfather. Okay, so uh, uh, when I went back into the articles and Wikipedia to look into Ted Sarandos, I thought, okay, um, he came up from very humble beginnings. 
and before he was with Netflix, he used to be, uh, he used to work with uh, some video companies, some video, um, what do they call them? Video, not streaming, but those people, they're like a blockbusters kind of company. And he grew with them until he became a regional manager. And um, when that business, when that business wound down, then he became, well, he started off with Netflix and grew to the point where he is now co-executive CEO of Netflix. Uh, his specific role is content creation, promotion within Netflix. So obviously he would oversee directly content being produced and promoted within Netflix. That still brings him into the realm of Harry and Meghan. I think the thing that would the, the thing that would stop him is how much ruckus any betrayal would cause him. Because, as I said, Nicole Avant herself is very, very powerful. Her father was friends with literally anyone, anyone and everyone in America. Look at this. This is Nancy Pelosi by his side. And her godfather is actually Quincy Jones. So if he is to make a move, a nasty move, uh, he will think very deeply about it before he makes a move. But that's having said all of that, I am quite certain that Harry and Meghan have diversified. In fact, they are diversified, not that they would have diversified. They are diversified. They have various sources of income. And what with BetterHelp, uh, Megan's podcast, and most probably investments that they have not announced to the public as well. And let's not forget that they're best friends with Serena and Alexis Ohenian. So, um, But yeah, having him being knighted is not good news at all. I definitely see a shift coming very soon. I see a shift coming. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Jay Seed says Ted's main goal at Netflix is PR, acquiring shows that shows that earns money for the company his job is to grow the company's vision this award acceptance is business global expansion yeah but so what is going to be the price he's going to pay unless the price he paid is cash for honors, which they cannot openly state that they have done because it's illegal. So what's going to be the price? Yeah, I say Ted Serrano's accepting that honor from, <laughs> from King Charles is a serious conflict of interest as far as Harry and Meghan are concerned. So I'm expecting that we will hear news as regards to this very soon. He might be able, he might have been thinking that he can manage. He will probably think that he can compartmentalize and one thing won't affect the other thing. But he's going to find out that he's going to have to choose a side very soon if he hasn't done so already. And when I remember that this happened, BBC buying Meghan Markle's legal drama 
suits for iPlayer after it becomes the most watched show on Netflix last year. It tells me that he's already compromising. It tells me that he's already compromising and they must be work, Harry and Meghan must be working flat out to try to get away from Netflix or finding some way of leveraging to the point where working with continuing their work with Netflix would not affect them adversely. Because this happening shows me that some kind of influence is being employed over Harry and Meghan because there was no other reason for them to have bought Megan's. There's so many good successful dramas on Suits. So why did they particularly go for, there's so many successful dramas on Netflix, sorry. So why did they particularly go for Suits? They are trying, they probably bought it to throw it into the archives, never to be seen again because after when meg when megan's drama was doing so well last year on netflix it actually changed a lot of people's opinions about megan they were like oh wow we never realized that megan had done this much yeah so them buying it to throw into the archives never to be seen again or probably to be tampered with since they've bought it and bought the rights to it so they can change it any way they want to although unless there are some restrictive terms in the contract they signed that just means that yeah they they can use it for their own agenda and we all know that where they stand right so we know that they don't have good intentions towards Harry and Meghan Uh, Resita says, well, it would be Sway Sway putting on the medal if he could be bothered to show up. Okay. Right. Uh, Gwen says, absolutely agree. The unroyals are going to expect loyalty in exchange for that honor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Netflix doesn't own suits. NBC Universal does. Well, BBC does now. They've bought it, right? Unless they've bought rights to it, which means to show it. Uh, I'll look into it with more uh, in in more detail. But the fact that they bought it, it just tells me that they are looking to. Uh, put more pressure on Harry and Meghan by encroaching on their sources of income. That is their path to claim sources close to the couple and Netflix. Yes, exactly. As it is right now, who is to say that he is not sharing every, infinite, uh, every little detail of what Harry and Meghan are doing with the royal family? What is what is he what what was his payment for this great honor did you hear they said it was the highest accolade in the land where is that article they said he's the this honor is considered one of the highest accolades in the la, in in the uk what has he done to deserve that What about this one? UK, this also tells me that they are trying to corral, they're trying to corral Harry and Meghan because this bid to launch, uh, to host the Invictus Games was them trying to take over the Invictus Games. You know, when people were saying it on Twitter, I didn't really pay them much mind because I just thought, how are they trying to do that? And I thought to myself, well, they have so many things of their own. Why would they pay attention to Harry's Invictus Games? Well, number one, because it's been successful. 
And because it's been successful, Harry's profile outside of the royal family has been raised and it then shines a light on the failures of the royal family. See, that's the point. It shines a light on the failures of the royal family because whether for good or for bad, when any of them go outside to do anything, there is always this comparison. There's always this comparison. There is always this comparison between Harry and William to say, okay, Harry's done this and let's look on the other side and see what William's done. It would be different in tone in the reporting, not perhaps so competitive if the two men were in agreement with each other. But I think regardless of whether they are in agreement with each other or not, there would always be that reference to say, oh, Harry's done this. And okay, he's done this. Okay, so let's look on the other side. What is his brother doing? See? And how beautiful it would have been if they were able to be in such good terms that they were able to support each other's endeavors. But with the way things stand at the moment, that is not a, not a possibility. Sussex Love says, that's what I fear too. He's going to be a spy now for the royal family. Yep. He does not look trustworthy. Just think about it. This is a man who came from very humble beginnings, right? He was working in a video shop, a D um, DVD rental shop. He clawed and clawed his way to the point where he could marry Nicole Advant. Nicole Advant is on the level of Hollywood royalty. Almost, just to give you an idea, she's ab literally above all the um, people, or rather, should I say her father, because of all the work he had done over the years. Clarence Avant, that's why they call him the Black Godfather, right? He was over and above most of the A-listers that we see today. How does a man who started off with such humble beginnings he started off being a regional manager for a video rental company, married the daughter of black or the black godfather, Hollywood royalty. How does that happen? Uh, So I don't trust him at all. I think this is one of the reasons why he would find the CBE very flattering because he's coming from such humble beginnings and he just seems like that ambitious type. Uh, Rosita says, BBC bought rights to stream it just like Netflix did, not ownership. NBC would never give up their cash cow. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. That's very good to know. That is very good to know. So six low. Okay, no, that's not for me. Is Netflix CEO that easily bought? That's not an easy thing, you know. That is not an easy thing. The CBE, um, there's some people who worship this royal family. <laughs> we have been so close to it that we have no reverence for it any longer. But the reality of the situation is that there are a lot of people. Uh, why do you think David Beckham is still crying for years that he has not been offered despite years of applying that he has not been given an honor. These people, they see it as one of the, despite everything that they achieve, if they haven't achieved an honor from the royal family, they feel like they haven't achieved anything. So it's, in the royal family have managed to build the honor system 
to the point where they've made people crave it, desire it so much that they're willing to do anything to get it. Case in point, my big, my brother, David Beckham, crying, <laughs> ready to kiss feet just so that he can get even the lowest honor given to him. Anyway. Uh, Sussex Love is trying to light on the world. Family does not do anything for all that money that they're getting from the taxpayers who can't hit their homes. And here, Megan making her own money. Exactly. They want some of that. They want her talent. They want her to show them how to do it. They can see that their model doesn't work. But they need from her a kind of reverence that she doesn't know how to give. They expect it from her. And she that was never going to work because the reverence that they expect, I don't even think that the average British person, the average British person hustling for their money, working to make a good living can give it. Uh, Jay Seed. Harry and Meghan have a five-year contract with Netflix and currently have several shows in the works. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those type of white men really admire white supremacy. Yeah. Strength when they come from nothing. They're not always Democrats. Yep. Which is why I sat down to think about how the relationship with... I, thought, I sat down to think... When I was looking into this, I sat down to think about how the relationship with Nicole was working because you can see by his choices that he's not typically the kind of man who would not be racist. I don't know. I hope his wife keeps her eyes open. Hi, blessed Easter to you too. The Royal Reach is very far, everything that Harry does they are themselves involved. Yep. I don't know that Netflix will seize airing suits. Black women tend to marry down. It's a problem in our community. It is a problem because we are so kind hearted. We don't want to believe that um, sometimes class matters. We don't want to believe that class matters. But when you're Hollywood royalty, how do you marry someone who is coming from that kind of background? There's no way he's not going to betray her at some point. There's just no way. Though they've been married for a long time now. Let me see when they got married. Uh, yep. Yeah. Let me see when they got married. Okay, they've been married for a while now, 15 years. They've been married to a while. Mm-hmm. They must be having some really difficult conversations in their household. That's all I can say to that. I don't know how that is working because it just seems to me that his politics, his choices are not lining up with what is needed for them to be able to have normal conversations at home. They've been married for 15 years, House of Sussex. The Cookies and Cream says the on royals desperately need and want Harry back. They're going after the Sussex's business dealings. They're trying to cut them off at the knees. They want to destroy the Sussex's union by any means. Yep, yep. Yep, desperately, at this point, they, they are desperately in need of Harry and Meghan to fail. And they are not failing. This is their frustration. They are not failing. Pierce Morgan was being his feelings with this announcement. He's been hoping for an award for so long. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Meghan married Harry, not the royal family, the firm of the monarchy. She's in America. We do not care about all that royal stuff. It doesn't take long for the wow factor to fade. He could be a social climber. So his way to get into Hollywood, marrying into black royalty. Well, um, if I've got to say that he has been married to her for 15 years now. So, and his position as CEO is not a lit, a small one. I checked how much he earns. He earns 40 million a year. 40 million is, is not small potatoes. <laughs> yeah, they are looking for ways to get Harry back without having to apologize and for him to come back uh, cap in hand, begging them for a place in the royal family, the same way they did to Edward. Uh, and they can't touch the Invictus games, that's Harry's. So Harry has to make very smart decisions from his head, not his heart this time. Uh, they can't take Invictus, he's the sole owner, nobody else, that is settled fact. But you've got a foundation. He's got a foundation and they all have to be moving in the same, and you've got a foundation where he is not the sole decision maker. So he's got to make sure that he can present things in way in a way he's got to make sure that he presents things in a way that it makes sense to them i know he can anyway i know he can i know he does the taking things to the uk will not be in the best interests of Archiewell. Archiewell. Okay, so anyway, uh, the, and you know, the reason why I have this on the screen and why I became, I didn't believe uh, uh, that the royal family were trying to take, as I said, I didn't believe that they were trying to take Invictus again, but when I see these moves, one after the other, them going after Harry and Meghan's interests, it tells me that they are actually trying to take their interests away from them. So otherwise, why would they not, if they can allocate money towards Invictus Games, why are they not allocating the money towards the Commonwealth Games? They can't find anyone to host it, right? So they might as well use the money for themselves. They might as well put the money towards the Commonwealth Games or adaptive sports in the Commonwealth Games. They can do it. They don't need to, they don't need Invictus Games to do their own version of adaptive sports. The reason why they are trying to host the Invictus Games because they're trying to find a way in to Invictus Games so that they can ruin it, they can corrupt it. And because they believe that the Invictus Games is the jewel in Harry's crown, and once they corrupt it, they ruin all of his future endeavors, which is slightly true. Because if there anything goes wrong with Invictus Games, it would be a huge blow for Harry. And that's why we have to keep on. So that's why we have to keep on um, supporting Harry and Meghan. Sussex love, you who and you and who? Are you kidding? They don't care about these black folks supporting black folks and supporting all those Windrush immigrants. Are you talking to me or talking to somebody in the comments? I assume it's someone in the comments.
No, it should not ever come to the UK. It should not ever come to the UK. It shouldn't ever come to the UK. I am convinced on that right now. Thank you very much for congratulating me on the 3K way, 3K threshold. You can see after Malaysia rejected the offer to host the UK, this was a perfect opportunity for William to stand up and say, okay, if nobody's going to host it, the UK can host it. After all, they've got more wealth than most other countries, right? So why, why didn't they host it? Why are they trying to get money to host Invictus Games instead? See? So it's all about being vindictive. It's all about Harry. Thank you very much, CMAC. You rock. Totally agree with you about the Invictus Games. Hope the UK doesn't get it. Yep. Thank you very much for the super chat. And JC says the Invictus Games brings in lots of money for the host country, hotels, restaurants, the Commonwealth Games, the community has to spend money to house the athletes. But it's the same, it's the same with the athletes for the Invictus Games. The foundation does spend money hosting the athletes uh, in support of them. But I think they have a lot of funding from the Ministry of Defenses of the various countries taking part in the games as well. Oh, okay. So Six Love says, no, I'm talking to you when you said they have money for the Commonwealth Games. If they have money for Invictus, they don't care about the what <laughs> you know why I'm laughing? I'm laughing because it's like you've got something in front of you, right? That you can easily access, but you're struggling to get the thing that is not in front of you. Why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> Why don't you mind your own business? Hello, Reba. Hi, Joanne. Oh, I've got to get moving, you know. We've got a few things. Um, well, while I was looking into this, do you know, I found this picture. I found this article. Sir Lucian Grage in the chairman, is the chairman and CEO of Universal Media Group, a key figure in pushing hip hop. Here he is being knighted by Prince. William. He is another one who was named in Diddy's lawsuit. I just thought I would randomly throw that out there. So why are they doing all this? Well, it's kind of obvious. It's kind of obvious why they are doing all of this. They want Harry back. They are not doing well at all. King Charles is obviously sicker than he is letting the public know. And there's so many things to take into consideration because he is the monarch. But I think if I were to guess, the most important reason he cannot let people know how sick he is is because a lot of questions will be asked. For instance, how long have you been this sick? If you were this sick, then why did you allow us spend more than a hundred million pounds on your coronation? Right? Why did you let us spend over a hundred million pounds on your coronation? And if he abdicates the throne less than two years after such a huge amount of money was spent to install him as king, there is likely to be an uprising because we are in a cost of living crisis. I almost had a heart attack looking at my elect my gas and electric bill. It has been, it's not been easy. <laughs> it's not been easy. And do you guys remember, I just, I just thought about it now, but 
um, do you guys remember when they were saying that uh, King Charles and William had reached an agreement on when King Charles would hand over to Prince William? I kind of feel that what has happened in recent times was a soft launch of that handover, but it failed abysmally. So now they're stuck. King Charles having cancer, Kate Middleton having cancer, was to launch William in a way because William's skills and his abilities are so below par that he does need that kind of, he probably felt like he needed everyone to step away so that he could shine. But unfortunately, King Charles is not sure that Prince William is fit to be king. And he has proven they tried to launch him as regent. I'm sure that they did try to launch him as regent. I am convinced that they tried all of these things that we have seen playing out in the public. Where them, it was them trying to launch William as regent. But he couldn't stop messing things up. So, his launch as regent failed. And this is why you've got people like this conservative MP crying and saying, Harry, Costas, Harry, the senior Tory MP slams Prince Harry for costing UK taxpayer £500,000, abandoned our nation. If you were doing well, you wouldn't care who was not here, right? He's out here, a public official for that matter, telling lies, trying to shape public opinion about someone who is more than 6,000 miles away from the UK. He says, um, they say, senior Conservative MP Daniel Kozinski has today criticized Prince Harry for costing UK taxpayers more than £500,000 and said a public inquiry is absolutely needed and with urgency. He said, according to a Freedom of Information request, the Duke of Sussex spent an eye watering 180000 of taxpayers' cash on barristers, 230000 on government legal department costs. 2,300 in court costs and almost 10,000 on an e-disclosure. I think if the if I put in a freedom of information request, I will find that Prince Harry did not directly cost the taxpayer any money. These were all costs that the government had to spend to take care of their own side of the case, which wouldn't have been required if they had just given him his, the security he needed in the first place or reached a reasonable agreement with him. Uh, so how's the success? So much for him being a statement. Uh, Baldy Lux, Prince William is going to be a big bully when he becomes king and is going to try to get Prince Harry back to be under his control. Yeah, I think that's why Harry and Meghan are quiet because they are probably working furiously behind the scenes to ensure that by the time William becomes king, they have set themselves up to a point where he cannot affect their livelihoods. Uh, Dana says, C3 was determined to wear that crown after waiting for so long. So Lizzie had to go on, but the audacity to spend so much in the cost of living crisis will be alarming to the public, especially if he now has to step down less than two years after he has been installed as king. Sussex Love says, I feel bad for the British people. The hospital system is in shambles. The pay is non-existent. The prices are out of this world because nobody will trade with Britain and royals are getting a pay raise. That is exactly right. Things are falling apart. Commonwealth games are for the Commonwealth. So I assume 
don't think it's the same as Invictus. UK is racist and prefer Invictus so that they can destroy it. Point on point on point, completely on point. Uh, House of Sussex says, why does it cost 10K for e-disclosures? Is it not just sending email? <laughs> they probably have to wear fing uh, golden fingernails to send the emails. That costs money. <laughs> that costs a lot of money. And everything that they're doing to smear Harry and Meghan is failing. Like even this doesn't hit because you know, reasonable thinking people who were not paying attention to the royal family or the controversy or between the royal family and Harry and Meghan. Their attention was drawn during the Where is Kate franchise. <laughs> their attention was drawn during the uh, Where is Kate movie. So now they when they throw out throw things out, it doesn't hit as it doesn't have as much impact as it used to have. So this is another attempt by one of them, the hate for hire, to smear Harry and Meghan, Tom Bauer's book on Meghan and Harry being pulled off shelves in US after journalists confront author. So Tom Bauer's books were pulled off the shelves in the US, Canada, and Australia. <laughs> Is it, they say some royal fans believe it happened after Vanity Fair writer Sam Kashner announced that the author misquoted him in his book titled Revenge, Revenge Meghan, Harry, and the War Be Between the, Sussex, the Windsors. Sorry. Meghan uh, Markle and Harry supporters says the book is full of lies. And here is the text of Sam Kashner's objection to Tom Powers' account of his interview with the Duchess of Sussex. He says, my interview with Meghan Markle, sir, I'm afraid Tom Power didn't convey my admiration and respect for Meghan Markle in the excerpt from his book in the Times on Saturday. I found Miss Markle to be exceptionally warm and gracious and admired her intelligence and her remarkable courage as I still do. I regretted the oft published account of challenging Procter and Gamble being edited out of my Vanity Fair article because I'd wanted to highlight her lifelong activism. The piece itself was quite laudatory. One thing, I do not have a stutter. I may hem and haw a bit, but a stammer is not a stutter. And as far as I know, Miss Markle never said she liked me because of it. A belated congratulations to Prince Harry for taking such an extraordinary woman as his bride. This is clearly a love match, so maybe we should stop piling on and let the couple live their lives in peace. Amen to that. And I had fun using uh, these. <laughs> I thought that was a slam dunk. And he, he went high and slammed his points in all the way. <laughs> All the way. Thank you, Sussex Love. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we have gotten to this point where I extend a warm invitation to anyone who is watching me for the first time. These are interesting times indeed, and many of us find ourselves navigating uncharted waters. So many things are happening in this day and age that we've never seen happen before. And we are actually witnessing history being made. Here on this channel, we don't just skim the surface of the news, we delve into its implications and sometimes, we do a bit of activism. Yeah, we take action. So whether you're seeking analysis or you're seeking to engage, there's something on this channel for everyone. And to our returning viewers, welcome back. If you haven't already, feel free to hit that subscribe button 
to our loyal subscribers a heartfelt thank you for being part of our community. In order to subscribe in, we encourage you to like, share, and drop a comment. For those who don't know, we also welcome donations to our channel. The donations go a long way and help to defray the expenses of the channel. So if you haven't already done so, choose, take a, take a step now, either subscribe, click the like button, leave a comment in the chat. If you don't know what to say, just leave a heart emoji or some other symbol of your appreciation in the comment section. Your engagement means the absolute world to us, okay? Hi, Lydia Washington. How are you keeping? Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, moving on. Now... Do you, because of all of the things that have been happening, I haven't had a, an opportunity. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, JC. Thank you very much for the super sticker. I haven't had an opportunity to shine the spotlight on Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's achievements in March. So let's do that now quickly. First of all, we've got the American Riviera. It's at 581 followers. Imagine an Instagram page with made with just one story on it and it already has accrued 581 followers. Amazing. 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 And the media, they say Harry and Meghan are irrelevant, yet they watch everything that they're doing jealously. Just look at this headline by Sarah Nathan of page six. I'm not the, I didn't even want to go into the details of the article. It was just a lot of speculation as to what direction Megan may be going with her new brand and the number of people they have taken the time to reach out to to find out what Harry and Megan's plans, or sorry, Megan's plans are for the new brand. Then According to the British media, Meghan's choice to launch her brand has only deepened her rift with the royal family. She's not supposed to work so that you can call her lady, lazy. And then she works and you call her greedy. Okay. Anyway, for those who are looking at the situation objectively, they can see that Meghan is scandal-free, unlike the royals in the UK. And she's taking her time to organize herself properly before making the, ro the rollout, before making her rollout for the American Riviera Orchard. It's just that everybody happened to notice as soon as her Instagram page went up. The next thing that happened in March was Archetypes. Archetypes is now streaming everywhere. And did you guys notice that they had these electronic billboards? I think this must be in New York. Fantastic. It's huge. And guess what else they did this March? Yep. Archie Welk partnered with Gian Co Foundation again. This is the David Oyelowo's foundation who also partnered with um, the Period Ab Abundance Foundation in Nigeria. 1,120 women were provided with menstrual hygiene products and educational workshops about menstruation. So it seems like it wasn't just about dropping the products and the funding and moving on. They also tried to pro provide them with the products needed. They also tried to provide them with information needed to use the products uh, properly and also how to take care of themselves as young ladies. I am up for that. And they, it's not just one school they went to. And they went to... 
They went to the schools in the rural areas. You can tell because look at the condition of this school. This is not a posh school at all. These are schools in the grassroots. So they went to the people who need these products the most. Look at this one. And I was wondering what kind of period products these are. I think maybe these are those panties that you wear, uh, which are supposed to uh, collect, I don't know, collect the stuff. I don't know what this is. Because these are obviously not pads or tampons. I think it's those period panties. And this is another school they went to. Oh, look at these. Everybody's so happy and proud to be showing off their hygiene products. Okay, so something else that Harry and Meghan did in the month of March. So on Prince Harry's side, BetterHelp, where he works as chief impact officers, officer has partnered with Practica. And you might be wondering, what is Practica? Practica is formerly best practicer, and it helps tech workers and employers work on career progression together. So you can design your own career path, and it just helps you um, plan your progress up to wherever you want to get to in your organization. So you can either do it yourself or you get matched to a human coach who would tell you like what courses you need to do to get to the next level in your career or what things you need to do to get to the next level in your career, which is fantastic. Another thing, another partnership that they have entered into is this one. Uh, it's called Pledge 1%. So this is a movement which encourages companies to donate 1% of equity, staff time, uh, product or profit to their communities, which is very much in line with Prince Harry's brand and his aspirations to philanthropy, don't you think? And the next thing is something happening with the Invictus Games. So their moves didn't end there. As part of their 10-year anniversary, the Invictus Games Foundation is now giving £10,000 to each is now uh, giving £10,000 to each member of the Invictus Community of Nations as part of their series of domestic grants. So their aim is to increase access to sporting opportunities across the 23 nations of the Invictus Community. 10 times 23, that's £230,000 was given away to the community of nations to assist them in their participation of the Invictus Games. Wow, 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 wow. So in summary, the royal family basically wants what Prince Harry and Meghan have. <laughs> and it just goes to show you that with the the current collapse, should we say, of the royal family, just goes to show you how much Prince Harry was doing to hold the royal family up. And he was able to achieve this despite the fact that he must have been, like so many obstacles would have been put in his path to stop him from trying to achieve the goals, which it was meant to make, and was making the royal family look good. It's, I don't know what is wrong with those people. Like they cut off their nose to spite their face and they're always looking at the wrong thing.
They're always looking at the wrong thing. Okay. Um, as you would have seen on the title of this video, there's an opportunity for everyone listening to call in and to share their opinions on the things that we have talked about. If you would like to call in, um, I think we can do a 10 minute conversation before we move on to the archetypes quiz. I'm going to drop the link for anyone who would like to call in in the chat. Uh, we can just do a brief chat. Let me know what your thoughts are about all the things that we are talking about. I can see two things that are making people really hot, which is the, um, the fact that Ted Sarandos is going to be knighted and Tom Bauer, who is just a racist nuisance. Poor Megan, she had to come over to the UK to deal with these kind of people. So ridiculous. So ridiculous. Well, uh, you... Uh, let me look at your comments. <laughs> what is going on? Hi, Agnes Collier. I love I love all the support for Harry and Meghan. And Someone says, I bet you during Invictus Games, Prince William will announce something about Princess Kate. Mark my words. I don't think, I think that the only thing that would have taken attention away from whatever Harry and Meghan are doing with Invictus Games would have been the cancer announcement. And he's already done that. So unless King Charles is going to oblige him and pass away, during the Invictus Games. That's the only other thing that would take attention away from what Harry is doing. Okay. Uh, um... What else? Rebus is disorganized. Hi, how are you doing? Reba says they cannot have what Harry and Meghan have because they do not work and they have allowed the firm to take their brains out. Yeah, I think it's a case where they just completely got carried away. I don't know whether it is possible not to be that carried away, but when you're in the lap of luxury, but they just you know, relied too much on these people. And now they're stuck. These people are holding them to ransom because it's almost like, okay, you can't survive without us. You can't survive without us. Okay. Sussex Love, I know you don't like to be the only person calling in. So if nobody else is joining you, I think we will just skip the calling and just move to the archetypes, unless you have something that more you would like to say. Leave a comment for me in the comment section so before I so I can decide what to do. Mm. Fatima says not this time the royals they're never ever going to be success every time coming from Prince Harry okay then they will be feeling okay Sussex Love says we can talk okay all right I uh, don't know why but 
Uh, I think because you have left a message in the chat, the dropped off a bit. So if you click it again so that you can come back on, then we'll just talk briefly before we go on to the quiz. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, do you, exactly, I was just going to say. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, hi, how you been? Okay. It's just Good. so upsetting to me about them. They just won't stop trying to destroy them. The comment from Tom Bauer, the only way to stop their to be successful is to obliterate them. So mm -hmm. the language was so strong and so yeah. um, and it's just saddening to me that they're falling apart instead of trying to mend getting themselves together, they, they still are focused on destroying uh, Harry and Meghan. So I'm just thinking about how we all have to band together and jump out there <laughs> and do what we can. Well, yeah, exactly. This is, a, this is exactly it. These are my thoughts exactly. But um, I mean, everybody, um, Harry and Meghan are an example of what you need to do when you are um, being pressed and suppressed and oppressed from all sides. <laughs> Just exactly. keep working, keep working, building yourself up. And, and praying. <laughs> and praying, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're going to be doing, supporting them, you also need to build yourself up as well. Yep. Because they are definitely going to need our support, I think, um, because it looks like they're n until, you know, until they have a failure that's so loud that they cannot spin it. <laughs> they're not going to stop. <laughs> it's coming because they're going to have to announce something to paid. I think she's, if she's not gone already, she's really bad because there's no way that they wouldn't just prop her on the chair. And, and just film for two seconds. I'm fine. I'm just, you know, yeah. you, you know, but nothing, nothing. So she can't even sit up. So she's bad if she's not already gone. And mm. when they put that out after everything that they've done to spin it in the live in the market, how was she at the market when she was in a coma? You know what I mean? So that might be the thing that finally breaks, breaks their back because they're just imploding. And they keep, it's like grabbing on Harry and Meghan, like they're trying to grab a life raft. Yes, you know? exactly. And they are, that's exactly right. They are grabbing onto Harry and Meghan, like they're trying to, they're holding on for dear life. Like we've produced something successful. Look, Harry and Meghan. <laughs> At the same time, they are abusing them at the same time. I feel the world is just looking at them like they are schizophrenic. Like, are you guys they, okay? They're psychotic. <laughs> they're psychotic. And Edward was never talented or smart. And yeah. William has always been vicious, selfish, and not smart. So, because he remember he tried to get a deal too when Netflix, when Harry got his, he tried to, they didn't want him because he, he's boring. Yeah. You know, he tried to do a documentary and send it to him. Nobody wanted him. And, and they keep saying about Megan and Harry pushing their titles. William has a title. He's going to be king. Nobody's interested in him. Nobody's interested. Yeah. Yeah. When they took Diane's title and she, when she broke up with uh, him and got divorced and they took her title and she had to go back to Lady Diana, she was even more popular. Exactly. So they don't understand it's the person wearing the title, not the title itself. Not the title itself. And um, one, I had a thought when I was thinking about um, Ted Serrano's taking this knighthood thing. And yeah. I thought to myself, well, 
why are they pushing so hard? And it seemed to me that Harry, they know that Harry and Meghan know their secrets, like apart from the facts of history, that's the mm. major thing that they have to their advantage. Everyone mm. like uh, gives the royal family a pass for being in mm. the position that they are of privilege mm. because mm -hmm. we recognize their history. Mm -hmm your father was king and your your other your grand great grandfather and your great grandfather and they owned so much wealth and this that mm -hmm. and the other mm -hmm. but they're german the windsors are of german exactly. diana was the one that was pure english through and through we had bloodlines back four or five hundred years that was diana they're yeah. germans so they're not even real british you know they don't have a real british line you know, and so they, they're just, they're fake. That's why they were always Nazi sympathizers, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, they, what was frightening to me is they just will not let go of them. And I don't want to, you know, um, keep up. I mean, I didn't want to, um, you know, interfere with, because uh, I want to play the game. <laughs> Yeah, but I just uh, I just had to say that it just was very upsetting to me that uh, this would happen that mm -hmm. uh, that they're coming at them this strongly. It's just I mean I don't know how to describe how upsetting that is to me that they would that they would do this that they are just so you know hell bent on destroying them. It's, it's just upsetting. yeah, we are going to every length to try and make sure that they cut them off at the knees and they uh, make sure that they're not able to have financial independence because that will force them to come back to the UK. And in the state of mind, they want them to come back to the UK in, which is soberly with their cap in hand, begging for a place back in the royal family the same way they between their legs yeah yep yeah, yep yeah. okay but i didn't want to take up everybody's time i but i just really needed to i wanted to say that that it's just frightening the lengths that they're willing to go to yeah you know and uh we just got to stay together and yeah they, they're yeah. trying to figure a way to get rid of us but they don't realize it's not a leader we're just one big family well they tried to make Christopher Boozy, the leader. Oh, I like the uniform, though. I do like the uniform. And he has been wiping the floor with them. I like the latest thing when he had that uh, software program that he put it in and, and it came up saying that, that all that stuff is AI, that that the yeah. video was AI and that the pictures yeah. were false. I hope that goes viral. I, I think I should do the video on that. I think that's the next video I'm going to do uh, on it. He has a whole thread on uh -huh. Spoutable about uh -huh. the the research that he did into that video and mm -hmm. pro he literally proved that that person was not Kate. And the picture in the farm, he proved it. He said it was not Kate. Yes. He did the software recognition. said that's not even the same structure of a face that's oh, face. similar to hers yes you know they could have the facial recognition uh thing in one of them that he did for the pictures and so he said the one in the car or the farmhouse was not catered according to the facial uh recognition um software so all of that stuff was fake you know? all of it is fake and you better believe that oh while everyone is enjoying their easter the um journalists are busy thinking of a strong comeback on when is it tuesday yeah they're thinking of a strong comeback on tuesday so guess what he's flooding the timeline with receipts Christy. <laughs> <laughs> lovely he's very All right. smart yeah. um let's thank get you happy easter to... squaddies yes thank you <laughs> happy, happy easter, easter squaddies <laughs> yeah okay i'll be Thanks back over there to play the game okay yeah bye-bye Bye. Okay, guys, it's that time of the evening. We've got our Archetypes podcast.
and it's on episode four of uh, the Archetypes podcast, the one on the demystification of Dragon Lady. So, who's ready? <laughs> who's ready? I did give everyone enough notice. I posted about it several times. So, hopefully, um, we'll be able to make some progress with it. But let's begin, shall we? <laughs> Sussex Love said, ready or not? <laughs> let's begin. So. According According to the, the podcast, what types of food did Duchess Megan eat while growing up in Los Angeles? Pizza, adobo, sushi, matzo, ball soup. Tamales, gom, goma, sab, sabzi, lab, matzo ball soup. Tamales, goma, sabzi, chow mein, matzo, matzo ball soup. Tamales, adobo, pizza, chow mein. Uh, Sussex Love says... Uh, Oh, where's my pen? Classic Love says, uh, number one, B. Let's see whether that's right. Okay. So, number two, we've got 10 questions. And we've just done number one. Uh, Sussex love. In which city did Duchess Meghan spend her weekends exploring Asian cultures? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, actually, you should put a timer on. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the third question, let me just get my timer ready, 10 seconds, right, so on the clock, What is a traditional activity Duchess Megan did with... Sorry, it's not yet time. What is a traditional activity Duchess Megan did with her mom to embrace Korean culture? Uh-huh. 
Oh dear, sorry, Cynthia. I will change it up next time. You say the pink and green are hard on the eyes and difficult to read. Oh, so sorry about that. Oh, and it's kind of late for me to change it now, but I will change it next time. Uh, Cookies and Cream says, I can't see the answers. Okay, A is watching Korean dramas. B is going to the beach. C is shopping at a Korean market. And D, going to a Korean spa. Oh, so sorry. I thought I would make it pink and green because it would show up more. Okay, I will try again with a different set of colors next time. D. Okay, let's try. Okay. If it was dark green, it would have been better, yeah? Dark green. Okay, I'll try I'll try the dark green next time. Okay. So sorry about that. Teething pains, teething pains. We'll get there. <laughs> Uh, the pink and green is pretty. The letters are small. Okay. I will get also increase the font. Mm, increase the font. I'm making notes. I'll read, I'll read the answers out now. Okay. So let's go to the fourth one. What Hollywood trope of Asian women does the podcast discuss? A, the heroine. B, the damsel in distress. C, the femme fatale. D, the dragon lady. I'll read the question again. What Hollywood trope of Asian women does the text discuss? A, the heroine. B, the damsel in distress. C, the femme fatale. And D, the dragon lady. D, the dragon lady. Let's see. Is that right? Hey. So let's go to the next one. What event prompted discussions about the impact of stereotypes on Asian American women? A, an academic conference. B, a protest march. C, the release of a Hollywood movie. D, the Atlanta spa shootings. And i read the question again. What event prompted discussions about the impact of stereotypes on Asian American women? A, an, acad an academic conference. B, a protest march. C, the release of a Hollywood movie. D, the Atlanta spa shootings. So Let's see what everyone says. So you've got D, 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 C. Okay. So let's try D. That's the wrong answer. 
the correct answer is an academic conference. <laughs> Don't you just love this new trivia maker? It actually has sounds for everything. <laughs> All right, let's move to the next one. We're halfway through. Uh, we've done five questions and we've got five more. Number six, who was named hot reporter by Rolling Stone magazine? Glenn, Glennon Doyle? B, Julia Louis-Dreyfus? C, Lisa Ling? D, Margaret Cho? Who was named hot reporter by Rolling Stone magazine? A, Glennon Doyle? B, Julia Louis-Dreyfus? C. Lisa Ling, D. Margaret Cho. Uh, let's see. Uh, mm. There's uh. The seventh one is, in which year did the film Crazy Rich Asians hit movie theaters? A, 2015, B, 2023, C, 2018, D, 1994. The seventh question is, in which year did the film Crazy Rich Asians hit movie theaters? 2015, A, B, 2023, C, 2018. Uh, let me see, what was the first response? Uh, Karen says, let's try. And the next one is number eight. What was the name of Lisa Ling's show where she got her big break at age 26 as a co-host? A, we can do hard things. B, the view. C, take out. D, this is life. The eighth question is, what was the name of Lisa Ling's show where she got her big break at age 26 as a co-host? A, we can do hard things. B, the view. C, take out. D, this is life. Ah. Uh, Let's try the answer. The ninth question is, who starred in ABC's All American Girl, the first primetime American sitcom centered around an Asian family? A, Lisa Ling, B, Glennon Doyle, C, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, D, Margaret Cho. Let's see. Let's see. 
And the last one, which three words did Lisa Ling use to describe herself as a kid? So just setting the timer for 20 seconds. A, shy, afraid, unseen. B, quiet, lonely, scared. C, tomboy, loud, aggressive. D, joyful, growing, nurturing. Who? And the you are <laughs> okay. So Sussex so Love, it looks like you did your homework because you answered quicker than almost everybody on you got the highest number of questions right first before everybody else on four questions which is the highest number you answered right so you are the our champion for this week you took over from Lydia Washington who was champion last week Karen Stevenson you are our maestro for this week you got the next highest number of questions right fastest. And who was the other person? Gloria. Well done, everyone. <laughs> you listened to the episode. All right. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you listen to the episode. It shows because you got the answers, uh, you got the highest amount of answers faster than e almost everybody else in, in the chat. And so well done, Sussex Love. And well done to Karen Stevenson. And well done to Gloria. Next week, we are going to do episode five. We're almost halfway through the podcast series. We're almost through the podcast series. So I can see some people uh, still talking about the Sussex News. Sonia Johnson says, these are not idle threats made against Harry and Meghan and must be taken seriously. The British press have called them irrelevant, yet they write about them every day. It's time to let them go. You know, I think, so what's the, I think this whole thing with Harry and Meghan might find its way to the international court um, just because of the way things are going. The royal family, although they're not that significant in terms of government, but they still wield a lot of power. Uh, and so I think after Harry does his bit fighting in the UK, the courts are not going to have any choice but to um, rule as justly as they can. Of course, if there's any gray area, they will rule in favor of the media houses, but there's so much evidence against the media houses that it is unlikely that they will not rule against them. And if they rule against them, it is likely that the media houses will start exposing the royal family secrets. This is what the fight is all about. So I love it for Harry and Meghan that they don't come out unless they've got something they're promoting or something important that they've got to say because it is very real 
their, that their lives are currently in danger. As in much danger as any of the lives of the people who are currently accusing Didi of whatever at the moment. So this is where we are. And if the things, if they don't stop harassing Harry and Meghan, I think it will get to a point where they will take things to the International Court of Justice for 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 justice to be done. And it's an international court this time around. Not a British court. And for Harry and Meghan to be able to achieve that, they are going to have to have money. So, guys, get yourself ready so that when Meghan formally launches her brand and you are ready to support because the money is not just going to them for them to live a lavish and luxurious life but for their very their very security their very security for those people who joined us at the after um my intro i had said that i would um Thursdays, in my opinion, my live stream, my video on Thursday didn't go as well as I wanted. The first part of it, okay, but the second part, not so much. The second part was the Content Creators Summit. So what I have said is that I will not be continuing with that segment going forward until... I have uh, further increased my subscriber base uh, just because um, it doesn't seem to be something that uh, a lot of people are interested in. I don't want to do a video for just two people. It takes a lot of energy and effort to create the videos. Instead, we're going to replace that um, segment with um, requests for spotlight. So if you've got a YouTube channel, even if you think, even if uh, you are not a Sussex content creator, you can uh, hit me up either by email or any of my socials uh, and let me know that you want me to shine a spotlight on your channel. And I'm sure that the Sussex friendly people who are in the chat will go ahead to support your channel. That's what we should be here for, to support each other and build each other up. Remember, we rise by lifting others up. Okay, so while our, uh, we are here, um, I think... Um, if you're still here in the chat and you haven't subscribed to House of Sussex's channel, please go ahead to subscribe to her channel on YouTube. Uh, Sussex. And if you don't have her... Let's see. She's current, let's get her to 1,000 subscribers or at least 500 subscribers so that she can begin to use her community page. I've just put her, I've just put the link to her channel in the chat. Please go ahead to subscribe to her channel. It is a relatively new Sussex friendly content creator with 207 subscribers. So let's see whether we can support her channel and get her up to 500 subscribers if possible. All right, that's all I have for this evening. Thank you all for participating in the games. Uh, I've taken notes on your reactions to the new format. 
and I will do what I can to make adjustments so that it's more user friendly. Okay, uh, so I will just uh, look at the comments now as I prepare to end this session. Uh, let me see. Uh, Masha says the UK media's harassment of Meghan and Harry will eventually end, to end probably end when they get bigger than them. Um, everyone continue to pray for the successes, each other and the world. And I think I will end this session on that note. Thank you everyone for joining us. Have a fabulous Easter. Take care. Until next time, this is Wheezy signing out. Bye-bye.